Can you see how gigantic this ferry is? Seattle, the entire world. And today we are on a gigantic ferry riding 35 minutes away from Seattle over to Bainbridge Island. It is one of those very rare sunny to do. We went to the Space Needle and the beautiful Chihuly Gardens. And today we're heading over to Bainbridge, which I heard is magnificent in the sun. Also, we're going to see the beautiful views of the mountains that surround us. Welcome everyone. I'm Ariel. This is Urbanist. And before I actually show you the views of the ferry, I actually wanted to point out, as I was at Pike Place Market earlier, I just posted a video about this, I found Oregon, not spring water, not mountain water, but rain water. Never touch the earth directly from the skies, bottled for your own beautiful pleasure. So let's try this out. Oh my God. Oh, that feels so good. Cue the Fleet Foxes music, which is a, one of my favorite bands from Seattle. It's very crisp, very clear, literally tastes like if I were opening my mouth and letting the rain just fall in. Ah, I love the Pacific Northwest. All right, let me show you the views. Welcome everyone, nice to see you here. Laura. Look how huge the seats are. This Also, I love that the seats kind of are reminiscent of a gigantic Burger King. That's how it feels like as well. Uh, but so much seating here, nowhere near as full. I'm, I'm not sure when Seattle gets super full. Do let me know. Maybe during rush hour it gets much more filled up. I love how comfy the seating is as well. But let's go in the back. Devin says the bottle was already fourth empty. Yep, because I already drank uh, quite a bit of it. Behold the views. Ah, ooh, ooh, it's cold. <laughs> it is very cold. Ah, uh, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God. Oh, I, I'm loving the Pacific Northwest. It is so different from what I've encountered in Ireland and UK and Italy. It has its own unique character. No wonder it's famous. So we are le leaving Seattle. We are about 10 minutes into this ferry trip and it's about a 35 minute ferry trip in total. Katya says the views are surreal. They are indeed. I mean, this is just majestic. Majestic is the best word. I mean, no wonder the Fleet Foxes. Trust me, listen to that band right now, everyone. Um, okay, Google, play fleet foxes alexa play fleet foxes do yourself a favor because you'll know exactly what i mean when you listen to their music it matches perfectly with their surroundings of their native seattle says I spoke too f all the cars so yeah this is a ferry that carries cars as well Hi. Uh, and here is the name of the ship called Col I'm not sure what that means Wow That beautiful crisp Pacific Northwest air. It does smell very crisp and it's very cold <laughs> as well. Despite it being nearly 70 degrees Fahrenheit today, still chilly here in the ferry. Let's explore more of the ferry, shall we? Sandy says, handsome face, thank you so much, Janice. Uh, as well, Janice, nice to see you here.
So great question. The ferry cost me. Let me double check the price. Nine dollars and twenty-five cents. Um, is this any pertinent information? Okay, I got a ticket like this. Uh, you buy it at the kiosk, but I did not realize that you can actually use your Orchid card. I'm not sure what happened. But you can use your Orca card. Orca card is like London's Oyster card. It's uh, like a more powerful Metro card. I think New York City really has to update a lot of stuff. I mean, the more different cities I go to, the more I realize like New York gotta get its S together. <laughs> but you can use it for light rail, buses, and ferries. Uh, and also like trolleys and monorails as well. There, there's a variety of different uh, transits here in Seattle. And this is useful because uh, you can use this also for the ferry. I did not realize that, so I ended up buying the ticket instead. And then coming back from Bainbridge to Seattle is free. So I'll show you more of the ferry, but before we continue with the ferry, I kind of want to show you here the history. It says Washington State Ferries. And here we see ferry workers in the 1930s. And this is the first aerodynamically designed ferry that and had passengers until 1966. Ooh, wow. Very uh, futuristic looking. Ferry boats have been active on the Puget Sound. This is where we're located right now, the Puget Sound. Uh, since January 1st, 1889, the city of Seattle and West Seattle at a bargain of five cents per passenger. Ferry system. Boat's fleet, mosquito fleet. I mean, that's just an odd name. Uh, was intense, it says. The Black Ball Line became dominant in the 1930s, owning the major routes, terminals. The automobile, the ferries became an extension of the state highway. Part of commerce. In 1951, the state of Washington brought the company and the basis for the nation's largest network of ferries. I love ferries. All ferry boats bear Indian names. Ah, that's why the name up there sounded interesting. Those of the evergreen class. This Northwest tradition is maintained in respect for all vessels to cross the sound, the Indian canoes. Oh, I love that. So yeah, there's a, a the name is a Native American name, like the name of Seattle. Seattle was named after the last chief that really ruled over these parts. We have more history about the maritime trade and industry here. And I think we're getting close to Bainbridge. But let me see if I can peek over to Seattle. So right there in the distance, we see Seattle, the city. Look at that. Right there, say goodbye to Seattle. We'll be show I'll be showing you more of that this weekend in the actual city. beautiful skyline. I am really impressed with the skyline of Seattle. It's truly like a, a very iconic skyline. Seattle, in my opinion, is up there with, uh, with New York, London, and um, basically those two cities in terms of iconic skylines. Because Boston is not really that memorable. Uh, maybe Chicago. Uh, LA, eh, not so much, but this is an iconic skyline. So there's bathrooms available here. We can go down to the car deck as well. But let me see if there's like an upper deck. Miss says, seems so small from this particular view. Yeah, I mean, because we're far away. We're already 30, we're already about 30 minutes away by, by ferry. This ferry goes fast. There's a lot of Indian artwork. So the name of the sound is called the Puget Sound. And when I first heard that word, I misheard. I thought it said putrid. I was like, who would call 
a sound, a beautiful body of water, the putrid sound. This doesn't speak so highly of the sound. I'm glad it is Puget, not putrid. Gregor says, I have a nice sweater. Thank you so much, Gregor. Appreciate you. <laughs> Kids screaming. <laughs> They're happy. Wow. Robert says, I never heard of this island. Well, stay tuned. Me too. I barely know anything about uh, Bainbridge. But look at that. Oh my God. Mount Rainier with the lenticular cloud right above it. Oh, we got so lucky. Everyone, 14,000 feet, the tallest mountain in all of Washington state. Active volcano that can explode at any moment, unleash mus massive mudslides that turn into tsunamis that will swallow Seattle whole. It's a beautiful mountain that people climb. And it's also one of the more prominent peaks in the world. It's more prominent than K2 in, uh, in uh, between the borders of Indian and Pakistan. Catherine says, wow, you really seem like a tourist. <laughs> um, I guess I stick out here in the Pacific Northwest. The, the styles is uh, more, more conservative or more comfy. Tara says, I live here, come to the ocean shores. Oh, so cool that you live here, Tara. That's awesome. Susie says, take a photo. Yeah, uh, I only have one camera on me. I, I gotta bring my second camera with me. Note to self, bring my second phone to take photos yeah I didn't bring my second phone so someone could take a screenshot oh this is a perfect view take your screenshots right now of Mount Rainier hey Rainier nice to see you here Rainier are you from the PNW do remind me that's so cool that you share the same name as the mountain Christine says, officer and the gentleman. Yeah. Uh, where was the shot? Was the shot over there in Mount Rainier? I heard that there's uh, places you can, you can actually visit. Look how tiny Seattle is. I mean, that city, it, it does feel like a big city when you're in it. Uh, not as crazy bustling as New York uh, or London. It's a bit more quieter, but... It definitely has some of that big city feel, especially with how tall the skyscrapers are. Does it all look uh, icy blue? So right now, the color of the water from my perspective is uh, a turquoise, kind of a greenish turquoise. Beautiful green color, actually. It's kind of a bluish green. There's a, there's a name for this color. Do let me know. It's not turquoise, it veers more towards green, uh, but has a blue undertone to it. Pamela says, welcome to the West Coast. Kurt's apartment on Airbnb is only $75, says Vince. Really? I gotta look into that. Thank you so much, Vince. You need to see orca whales. I'm hoping that we spot a whale. Aquamarine says it'll solve, but teal, it's not quite teal. That's a, that's a good one. I wouldn't call it teal. Uh, Raina says sea green. I think sea green, emerald blue, blue green gets a little bit closer, yeah. Doreen, nice to see you here. Miss says looks like Shutter Island. <laughs> All right, we're arriving. 
So let's uh, see what else we can see of the ferry. Coffee shop. Gigantic ferry, my god, <laughs> it's huge. Sally says, Enjoy your time in Bainbridge. I will. If any, if we have any Bainbridge locals or any Seattle in Bainbridge, I don't know anything about it. So, all of you are joining me on a first time adventure. I didn't have uh, time to research into Bainbridge. Uh, so we're going in fresh, all of us. So uh, who knows what we might encounter? I'm not sure. I have no agenda, no plan, no specific list of things to do, no itinerary. We're doing this fresh. AP, good morning. AP, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't write in caps. It's like screaming in the party, but thank you so much for tuning in. So we're right, arriving right now. There's a Bainbridge in Northern Ireland, says Kate. Uh, Kate, does not surprise me. Huh? There's a lot of workers down there having a meeting. What time is it, Susie? Susie, I, I went live just a bit earlier. So it should be around 1 p.m. No coffee shop, coffee shop was closed. But I heard Bainbridge has a, a very famous coffee shop. I know there's one. Chris says, I went to Bainbridge last year and there was a central business district. Oh, that's awesome to hear. Doreen says, I enjoy not having an itinerary. I'm glad you do, yet yeah, likewise. I mean, that's why I've been doing more of these live videos. I want to like, actually show people that you, you don't need to know much about going to a place to go there. Uh, as I mentioned, I barely know anything about Bainbridge. I saw like one YouTube video that mentioned one coffee shop there. That was the only thing. And uh, I found out that the ferry, you can easily go there. I just went to the ticket uh, stop. The ferry's right at the waterfront in downtown Seattle. Very easy to access. And I think it's very important to show this because they're kind of, uh, it shows that it's easy to travel around on a whim. Johnny says, will you be coming to Pulse Bowl? I don't know what, what Pulse Bowl is. Do you let me know about it. AEP says it's Blackbird Bakery. Oh, thank you so much. Blackbird Bakery. I'll keep it in mind. Scott says, is it in like Martha's Vineyard of Washington? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how uh, Bainbridge is a location for very rich residents. I don't think so. I think uh, I'm under the impression that a lot of immigrants moved here in the 60s. Um, that's what I was briefly heard. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Adam says, how's different from the New York City ferry? This ferry has more, uh, this ferry has cars. Uh, New York City, I don't think no longer has any ferries with cars. So, and it's much bigger. And it runs more frequently than New York City's ferries. Do you know how many cars can fit? I don't know. The clearance is 14 feet. Um, I'm not sure how many cars can fit. Let's see. There's an ambulance in there. Uh, electric Jeep as well. And here they put on, this is where we exit. 
So here they put on the bridge that connects to the ferry terminal. Very, very good planning. So it's dual level. You exit through the second level if you're a passenger. And if you're a driver, you exit through the ground. Oh, also bikers. Sally says, I go in and out uh, to the San Juan Islands. I was tempted to go to San Juan Islands, but they're far. It's like a three, three hour and a half journey, uh, which is hard to do as a day trip. Sally says, keep your eyes out for bald eagles. Yeah. So everyone, let's go to Bainbridge Island. Slam that like button right now. Uh, Seattle is not one of those cities that's very popular via search, uh, especially for live video. Uh, so in order to bring these live videos to people who would want to see them, but just wouldn't be searching Seattle Live, press that like button, increases the chances for people who really could use these live videos to be brought to them. And also so you can keep seeing more of these live videos as well. Yama asked, have I been to Pike Place? Yes, I did go to Pike Place earlier today. I will be covering it on a live video, stay tuned. Every live video is a surprise. And then I stay in Seattle, I am indeed staying in Seattle. You'll see exactly where I'm staying uh, towards the end of my trip. I'll be posting a tour of my location. You're on YouTube? I am, yeah. Oh, hi. Hi. long line and the ferry it doesn't even reach capacity with this long line <laughs> Sally says I wonder if they still have the gum wall I do intend on showing the gum wall so it will be on the live video stay tuned Zito says Seattle usually rains like the UK it does I mean I've gotten super lucky two days uh, and thanks to a few urbanists who reached out, who are local to the area, told me, try going to Bainbridge today uh, because it is a super sunny day. It's great to visit this island on a sunny day. Chris, the ferry ride was a total of 35 minutes. Uh, on time, it passes occasionally, like very often. I think it's every 30 minutes to 40 minutes.
Rocky says, do you have a supply of drama me? I do have a little bit of drama me with me. I usually don't need it, especially on a sunny day like this. Uh, the seas are not rough. So we are here and oh cool. Okay, so the ferry terminal is right at the main thoroughfare. This is awesome. So it's potentially the only one thing you have do have to check uh, beforehand when traveling on a whim uh, via ferry or via railroad is here in the US, it's not always the case that the town is right next to the ferry port or the rail stop. So you do, do double check that beforehand. Um, in Europe, it's more common especially in, in like UK and, uh, and Italy and uh, parts of Ireland. Once you get off a rail stop or a ferry stop, you're probably pretty much right there at the town center. So let's continue going. I love the name of this, Commuter Comforts. And a lot of tiny little kiosks have coffee, which is awesome. Gary says, hope you have some suntan lotion, you'll be getting burnt. <laughs> yeah, you know, that would be a good idea, Gary. Uh, but, um, uh, <laughs> no, I didn't plan for it. It's not going to be that hot. I also didn't plan for it. Nope. Am I going the right way? I hope I am. Maybe I am? Not sure. Brenda says, check out the museum. Maybe. Let's see. Macaulay says, much different vibe from New York City. Yeah, I have a feeling it was this way. Yeah, I see a lot of people walking that way. Yeah, I'm feeling this way. I think uphill is not the way to go. Our ferry uh, rides a lot to go to Vancouver, British Columbia. Ooh, that's a great question, Dwayne. I don't know for sure. I know there is usually a ferry that goes to Canada. I'm not sure if they're running right now because Canada still has restrictions. Mikali says, I will have to rent a bike over here. Yeah, uh, there is these uh, bikes that you rent via using apps. All right, bear with me. I got to drink some water. I'm very thirsty. Um, but yes, you can. There's a lot of these bike companies. If I see them, I'll stop by them and show you the names. Uh, there's a few companies and also there's scooter rentals as well. So if you're here in the U.S. traveling from uh, a different country that's not Canada, uh, I would recommend getting a local SIM card and downloading those apps either before you come or go to, or your hotel room so you can use them on the whim. No, I'm going to says, I want your sweater. <laughs> This one's not for sale, <laughs> and I'm this dude. Ooh, there's a bus system here. That's cool. Susu says, hey, Ariel, great seeing you on the West Coast because it's better catching live at this hour uh, than the ones in the UK. Yeah, yeah, I'm finally viewable by many West Coasters and people in the Pacific like Hawaii. Make a left says AAP. Oh, cool. Sorry, excuse me. I'm just inadvertently let out a burp.
Oh, there's lockers. That's kind of cool. So there's a bike rack here. Oh, that's awesome. And there's lockers. This is awesome. Cool. MDN says that the, the Japanese American community is here. Yeah, we're gonna check that out. Unfortunately, I think. Uh, well, there's a memorial here, which is uh, which is interesting. Lori says, good afternoon, Ariel. Thank you so much for showcasing our beautiful area and great to enjoy this through your point of view, sending help for lunch or, co uh, for lunch or coffee. Thank you so much. So Lori is uh, sponsoring the coffee break that will ensue here in Bainbridge. So thank you, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. I appreciate you, Lori. A round of hearts for Lori. Miss says, no offense, but isn't it too hot to have a sweater on? Miss Miss, I take full offense. How dare you say that I don't know how to dress for the weather. <laughs> uh, Miss Miss, in all seriousness, um, yeah, yeah, it's going to get too hot. I have a, a t-shirt underneath this, um, so I'm prepared to shed a layer. But do bring layered up because it might be seven, going to 70 degrees right now, but it's going to get uh, colder at night. So especially if you're riding the ferry back, you better come prepare with a, a, another layer because you might find quite a chill. Oh, look at this. Wow. High life. It's built into a former gas station. Beautiful bakery. Oh, Ron says uh, night bus still in New York City. Oh, no. Yeah, thank you so much for reminding me. I forgot to update it. So someone just mentioned Pulsul Bowl. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, that's cool. Do let me know what, what's in Pulse Bowl. Pulse Bowl. I think the city center is this way. Cool car, look at that. The arm of a Kraken says this artwork. Paul says it's, uh, Pat says it's pronounced Paul's bow. Thank you so much, Paul's bow. All right, thank you so much. Are you visiting Cobain's house? Someone just asked, um, where is Cobain's house? I have not searched it yet. Do let me know. Marcy says, uh, Paul's bow is a fun Scandinavian fishing village. Lots of Norwegians settled in the Seattle area. I bet you can get a bus if it's too far to walk. Ooh, thank you. Mm, so peaceful here. Let me know if you're able to hear me in terms of volume. Lorraine V, send 500 stars. Thank you so much, Lorraine V, for the 500 stars. Is it easy to get around bus, says Veronica. Yes, Seattle has a robust transit system. Buses, a light rail, a monorail, uh, a trolley, even a streetcar. And it has ferries, a very extensive ferry system. So, so far, I found it very easy to transport around Seattle. And you can use it all using the or 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 Orca ca card which is basically a super powered Metro card or an Oyster card. Some history here about the port. No. 
Lori says the Kurt Cobain house is in Aberdeen, two hours away from Seattle. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sticking to places where I can reach via bus or car. I mean, not car, via bus or train, so, or ferry. Bainbridge Museum of Art. Beautiful architecture. I love it. Look at that. Wow. It's a free art museum. Hmm. All right. It's free. Let me know if I can. Let's see if I can walk in with the camera. Have you spotted any hipsters in Seattle? Ron, that's a good, good question. <laughs> that's a very good question. So if people don't know, uh, there's a very famous show called Portlandia. Portlandia is a show, remind me who the two main stars are, uh, their names, uh, excellent, excellent comedians. The show takes place in Portland, Oregon, which is uh, about a four hour drive away from Seattle. It's pretty close. That show shows kind of the pinnacle of hipsterness. So hipster is a movement, if you don't know, uh, from the past 20 years, start around the early 2000s, of uh, people wearing thick frame glasses, having the tattoos, uh, wearing the flannel shirts. A lot of those aspects are hipsterness, eat, uh, drinking at fancy coffee shops. Portlandia took that to like the maximum level, turned up that to 11 and made fun of that culture. The reason they chose Portland as their location was because Portland already had that culture pre the popularization of the hipster in the 2000s. So before there was a Williamsburg, Brooklyn with uh, hipsters wearing thick frame glasses, drinking their fancy lattes or flat whites, uh, they end up um, uh, that culture wearing flannel, of drinking good coffee, of having tattoos, of being an artist. All that was very commonplace already in Portland and Seattle. So Seattle pretty much already has that hipster aesthetic with the flannel shirts and the tattoos. So short answer, yes. <laughs> There's a lot of hipsters in Seattle. Uh, Kelly says, Carrie Brownstein. Thank you so much. Carrie Brownstein and Fred Armisen. Why is this light not turning? Sorry, I've been waiting for this light and it hasn't turned. Wait. It waited for me to give a full explanation on hipsterness. Chris says, if you want to go to a hipster, uh, the hipster capital, go to Capitol Hill. <laughs> it's the Bushwick of Seattle. Yes, I will be covering that at some point. Stay tuned. Free art museum. Open daily, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. All right, let's walk in. I'm going to see if I can uh, film inside. There's a chance... It is, I and mean, chance not. So bear with me. Let me know if anyone wants to do a run through of our museum. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Is it free admission? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. awesome. Can I walk around with my camera and show? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that'd oh, be no problem. Awesome. Like the only, as long as there's like no flash, but no if flash. you're filming it, it's like. Filming, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah for okay. YouTube. That okay. is all good. Okay, um, wonderful. If you could just uh, sign in, though. With your, ah, damn. I don't have a second phone. Uh, <laughs> is it possible uh, manually? Okay, cool. Yeah, I was like thinking about that, too. It's like, oh, that's probably going to be a little bit of a problem. <laughs> What is it filming for? I run a show where I explore cities around the world, and it's mm -hmm. called Urbanist. Urbanist, okay. And uh, basically show how people, too, explore a city almost without knowing nothing. So I came here to Bainbridge without knowing anything. Okay. And kind of showing how easy it is to travel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, no, Bainbridge is a perfect place for it. Well, what's a good coffee shop, actually, that you recommend? Oh, let's see. I know, man, I don't go to coffee shops very often around here. Or how about food? Food. Oh, there's lots of good places around here. So it's like you know, just go to most of the stuff you'll get just down along this main stretch here. Yeah. Um, uh, one place that I really like is Kalbasa. It's a Vietnamese restaurant. Oh, cool. Um, Kalbasa. Yeah, Kalbasa. Okay. There's um, also uh, Hitchcock. It's like multiple things. I don't know, like we kind of shift around. There's yeah. three different buildings and like like one's a bar, one's a cafe, and then one kind of like switches around a lot. Oh, I interesting. Don't know what, what, who they are currently right now, but they usually have something kind of cool going on. Okay, Hitchcock yeah. as well. 
And that's all on the main street? Yeah, you'll find most of the stuff. And there's also like, you know, an Italian place and a Mexican place and a uh, vegan uh, like food stand. So it's like lots of pretty cool stuff along there. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much for your recommendations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So welcome to the Seattle Art Museum. Stay tuned. This 
these ties with knots. Um, if you, you can imagine that if this were flat on the floor, it's bouncing right at that sort of like a leaves falling in the puddles and kind of the, the just what's happening all the time and how things, you know, just sort of blend together. So and, here where they were, the uh, confinement sites, the, so where they incarcerated thousands of Japanese Americans. Ellis Island, that, East that Boston, that and here in Seattle. Again, Jan's a fiber artist by definition. Oh, sorry. Um, her definition of fiber goes way beyond the boundaries of what most people would think. But you see the beautiful crochet work um, that she's embedded from these different layers. And in this particular case, there's a she uses watch parts um, sometimes, and this signifies passage of time, just this one simple spring from a, from a watch or a So before we go upstairs, we have any questions? Okay, let's go upstairs. So before the other group comes up here, they'll give you a tour, it's free. Japanese by the thousands were incarcerated in concentration camps. Uh, during World War II because unfortunately uh, America was very nervous that there was going to be Chinese spy, uh, J Japanese spies and Japanese infiltrators and saboteurs. This almost also happened to the Germans in World War I but the German um, communities had a lot more power so that did not happen to the Germans but unfortunately it did happen to the Japanese and thousands of them regardless how many generations American they were already were put into concentration camps and they lost a lot of businesses, a lot of jobs, they lost their communities. They were just ripped apart uh, financially, socially, I imagine also on an individual level, emotionally. So Leah says this is internment camp, so thank you so much, internment camps. Ron says that George Takei has a play on Broadway about that moment. He does, yeah, I call it Allegiance. George Takei being one of them. Art museums. 
um, because they were considered more books, they've been in special collection libraries. So the University of Washington, especially at universities, um, the Smithsonian, um, the Library of Congress has a huge collection of artist books, um, contemporary artist books, even like these. Um, but the, the public has access to them, but um, it's, it's very much controlled. You know, you could go to the Cisola Library at the UW, and you go downstairs to the special collections area. Um, I've been there many times. I've, I've written various books and done things where I have to research borrowed negatives from photographer or archives, things like that. So you can go down there and look through their catalog and ask to see one or two and they'll bring them out to you. But you're sitting, and I'm not trying to minimize it, but it, it, what I'm trying to say is, you know, you don't have a lot of access. You, you're, you sit at a table that's very clean. Um, they typically will give you a piece of paper or two and a pencil. You, you check your bag. You put your M&M's away. You know, <laughs> and, um, so, um, so Cynthia is thinking like, well, gosh, it's an art form. Um, and you know, if you look at the history of contemporary art in American museums, there's always been fine art and there's been craft, right? And a big separation. And it's only within decades that things like glass art um, that wasn't, you know, old or photography even or jewelry art, these things are being embraced by public museums. Um, so artist books are another thing coming down the pipe that people are realizing we'd like to have more access to. But they're fragile, and they're really made for one person to sit at a table and unfold them or open the pages and things like that. So how do you present this to the public in a successful way? Um, all year round, we rotate three times, um, chosen from the Cherry Grover Gallery. If you've been here before, you've seen artists on this way. Many, nice to see you here. Many, welcome. Many, many explorers. Great channel on YouTube. He actually visited Seattle two weeks ago. I, I've wanted to visit Seattle for quite a while. Um, as I mentioned in my previous videos, I couldn't explain why, but seeing Manny's videos was, uh, was kind of the confirmation. It was like, yeah, I should go here. So check out Manny's videos for more Seattle. Uh, he also does a lot of walking videos. Uh, and I think some of them are silent. So yeah, if you want to check out his vlogs where he talks about food, but also he does uh, walking videos as well. Many explorers. So welcome, Manny. This is a beautiful museum. Highly recommend coming here, taking your time, maybe taking the free tour. Uh, he was chatting how books were made. Okay, everyone, I have to take a commercial break. So I'm gonna seize the opportunity here at the museum to take that commercial break. So once a video pops up, stay tuned. I'll be coming back live. Let's go. I'll be right back. Let me put on a video. <laughs> oh, I gotta record more train videos.
I have been waiting for this for a very long time. I'm obsessed with ancient history, especially before the written word. I'm fascinated as to what happened in humanity before we were able to write down our history. Well, this is one of the most iconic landmarks in the entire world, Stonehenge. It's a very old landmark. Well, how old is it really? And who built them and why? And how did it get here? And why is it here? There's so many questions. Today, we're gonna answer a few of those questions as we walk around Stonehenge. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist, and welcome to Stonehenge. So how old is Stonehenge? Well, for that, we have to talk about the stones. Right over here, we see the perfect alignment of the solstice, both the midwinter sunset and the midsummer sunrise, right through those stones. And this is the huge sarsen stone. Right here, we see the alignment. And the alignment actually leads to an even more impressive earthwork, which was a processional avenue that extends almost two miles long. Now this was filled with farmland and places to herd animals. But there is another mysterious stone right down there. We have what's called the slaughter stone. Now we can't see it perfectly from this perspective, but when rain falls on that stone, it turns into a bloody red. But why? Well, many theories are abound. Many people think originally a lot of the Okay, so note to self, record more videos that are passive <laughs> because I don't have enough like passive videos in, in the UK, I recorded train rides. Uh, and then uh, beyond that, if you want to see um, that video of Stonehenge, go back, it's on YouTube and you'll see the full vlog on Stonehenge. So uh, Ron says, I'm feeling that you're going to go to Japan soon. I would love to go to Japan. I hope it opens up. It's still pretty uh, restricted to go there. Uh, and I, I need a bigger budget. So getting a bigger budget, I'll definitely go to Japan. All right, let's go downstairs. Marcy, do let me know how much you sent. Thank you so much. Amazing museum. Thank you awesome so much. Dessert. Yeah. And I wanted to say, yeah. I heard you were looking for a coffee shop. I am, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pegasus is the best. I, Pegasus, I okay. just went like 30 minutes ago. Oh, very cool. Um, and it's the best ambiance on, on Bainbridge. So definitely check that spot out. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. And then any uh, any cool bakeries? Uh, they or do like, baked goods there. Too. They also do baked goods. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. All right, awesome. Yeah, Thank course. you so much. I appreciate it. Have a good day. All right, we got we got the we got the intel. You know, that's what that's what we do. We uh <laughs> that's how one acquires information. <laughs> Just ask. <laughs> Where's a good place to go? Uh and here in the US generally people are very friendly with giving you their recommendations. Uh so Pegasus says so a few people already recommended. And Marcy, thank you so much. I gave a donation to the museum. Thank you so much for your PayPal. Appreciate that. Uh so that was a great museum. Highly recommend watch, uh, going to them. If you enjoyed, if you're unable to come to Seattle yourself, that's okay. Uh, go on TripAdvisor after this and leave them a review, a five-star review. Say how much you enjoyed the museum, as if you were there. You don't need to mention the live video. Let's continue walking through Bainbridge. Lori says it was generous that the man allowed you to record there. Yeah. Yep, it was very generous of them.
it's pretty rare to be allowed to record in a modern art museum. Hi Key says, I'm high, and the way you're turning the camera, I almost passed out. <laughs> yeah, but I do quick turns. <laughs> Hi Key, I'm so glad uh, you are watching this under the influence. Uh, welcome. DS asks, what has uh, anything of Seattle, what has surprised me of Seattle? Right now is how awesome it feels. Uh, it truly feels like a great city. I, I would say that the reason it feels awesome is A, there's great public transportation, it's walkable, and it seems like there's a variety of things to do. I've only really done downtown and the, and the World's Fairgrounds so far and today Bainbridge, but I'm getting the, the feeling that it's awesome to go to different neighborhoods. And also the fact that there's a peaceful island just off one ferry ride. I mean, this is the same distance as going from um, Manhattan all the way to Staten Island. And we're almost seeing this beautiful nature. This is awesome. You don't see this in Staten Island or New Jersey, at least not that close. So here it says the Winslow Ravine. You're standing by the amazing intersection of Bainbridge's islands, and we are on the island. It is geology, ecology, and human history. The last during the last glacial period about 16,000 years ago, miles of ice pushed across the Salish Sea and the retreat, retreated north, gouging deep groves that became channels of many of our island streams. After glaciation, the ravine's wildlife arrived and adapted to a new home. Wow, that's written very well for geology. The Squamish people called the body of water into which the stream flows, the home of eagles. The Squamish families here lived since immemorial, have stories of foraging and fishing in the waters and watersheds of this ravine. Beautiful. So here's Bainbridge Island. We're located right here. Lori says, how are you enjoying the, stay, oh, no, no, the place I'm staying at? I'm enjoying it. You're going you're gonna to see. It, it, there's a few downsides to where I'm staying. You'll see at the Airbnb review towards the end of my trip. Slash hotel review. Wendy says, I could take the uh, ferry to Canada. So a few people have been saying, uh, you uh, go to Vancouver or go to Portland. My plans are already set for another city in the US and it's not the Pacific Northwest. I'll leave hints as to what that city is starting next weekend. Um, but unfortunately, I, I did not realize how easy it would have been to travel within the Pacific Northwest. It kind of slipped my mind. I didn't realize, oh, I could have easily done Seattle out and Portland, or easily Portland, Seattle, and Vancouver, and then gone back to New York City via direct flight. Didn't realize how easy it would be. Um, so I did not include Portland nor Vancouver in my travel plans. Ooh, cool, postcards. Ooh, design here, printed here. Oh. Some mega urbanists, some mega urbanists will be getting a Bainbridge Island postcard. They're three dollars each. Okay, so these most postcards are usually a dollar each. We're gonna get three of these. We're gonna get three cool Bainbridge Island postcards. I really love them. I kind of enjoy this one more. This one, it's cool. Look at that. That's awesome. 
Isabel says, postcard, yes. So if you want to become a mega urbanist, go to patreon.com slash urbanist and you'll get postcards like these brought over to you, like this one. I, I, I'm not a fan of super minimalist postcards. I usually don't send them unless it's something really interesting. I usually like the ones that show more of the scenery and especially I like these ones that are a little bit more artsy. So well, let's go for the Orca one. Yeah, this one looks cool. So three of them. Okay, I had to mute because they were playing some uh, popular music, but um, the woman behind the counter designed the postcards herself. Uh, it was really cool. So, and I also got stickers. So if I don't send you a Bainbridge ferry, you might have a Bainbridge sticker on your Seattle postcard. So stay tuned. And I send the postcards randomly, but after a while with my mega urbanist, especially the ones who let me know a little bit about themselves or message me after the postcard arrives, I get to know you a little bit more and I know what type of things you like. So, um, for example, I have a certain mega urbanist who's a mega animal lover. And I always pick the animal ones for her. Cool shop, I might go back there myself afterwards. I gotta put this in my backpack, so bear with me. Ooh hotel here, the Winslow. DS asks, are people hospitable? Yeah, people are very hospitable in Seattle. Um, I would say it's a bit friendlier than New York City. But there's a something called the Seattle Freeze, which I actually haven't encountered luckily. Uh, but being a New Yorker, I assume it's a matter of time. Apparently, the Seattle freeze is uh, Seattleites are, you know, friendly and hospitable uh, on the onset. But if you get too personal or try to small talk too much, they kind of freeze up. I'm not sure if, if that stereotype holds true. Uh, I haven't encountered it yet. I've encountered very hospitable, but it's similar to New York. There's a, it's a bit straight, uh, direct to the point, and, um, and not too much small talk here in the P, at least in Seattle. Maybe it's a city thing. Maybe it's different in uh, other parts of Washington. Let's continue. Oh, I gotta drink some water. I'm getting very thirsty. Let me know if that ever happens to you where you just get so, so thirsty. After like a long night at the club, you're getting very thirsty. Let me know if you feel that type of thirst. Kate says, are you getting strange, strange looks where you're filming? No, not at all. No, similar to New York. People here don't um, really find it too unusual. So a lot of people kind of already understand I'm doing a live video. Or at the very least, least filming a vlog. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty normal. Wow, this is great rainwater. Wasn't London like that? London, yeah, very similar to London, yeah. London is a bit more polite. Seattle is not as polite as London. Doesn't mean they're mean. Uh, Seattle people are very nice from what I've seen. Uh, but in the UK, there's more politeness. Seattle's sim more similar to New York. It's more straight.
Is Seattle a diverse city? It is, Susie. Yeah, I haven't shown too much of the diversity yet, but stay tuned. We be, we'll be visiting uh, the, a very old Chinatown uh, that also has a lot of Korean food and Filipinos and um, Vietnamese as well. I'll be showing that area. And Eileen says in Seattle, I'll have caught in mouth too. <laughs> I swear, it's not that, ladies and gentlemen. I swear, no. Uh, <laughs> it's not caught in mouth. If you don't know what caught in mouth is, um, well, if you know, you know. <laughs> in Seattle, yeah, it'll be, it'll be easy to experience that symptom. Any Puerto Rican community in Seattle, I don't know, but I have a few Puerto Rican followers who are based in Seattle, which is interesting. Oh, I love this. Doreen says higher elevation. No, no, we're not. We're pretty close to sea level. I think we're a little bit elevated now, but not that much. So no, Seattle is a pretty low city. I haven't been to high elevation spots yet. Eileen says don't miss out. <laughs> can neither confirm nor deny that, that there was uh, some oregano buying. I can neither confirm nor deny, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to make a video, but I ended up realizing, oh no, <laughs> social media won't like that. Alex says, similar to munchies. Yep, yep. I can neither confirm nor deny that Feeling very thirsty is something that comes along with, with, uh, with the consumption of oregano. Wow, I love the trees. Oh God, Pacific Northwest trees. Yes. Dia says it's over 20 somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> that it's 420 somewhere. Yvonne, nice to see you here, 200 stars. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Macaulay says, Ariel is always high in life. Indeed, I am. Wow, sun is beaming today. I'm going to get a nice Seattle suntan, ladies and gentlemen. Katya says, if it's secondhand, there's uh, nothing wrong. Well, he... <laughs> as, as every U.S. president always says, I, I, I smoked, but I did not inhale. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, a lot of people are very lost as to what I'm talking about. A lot of people in the comments are talking about. <laughs> I'm not sure where to place you in the right direction to, le to learn what we're talking about. Maybe watch a, a show like Broad City or watch a movie with Cheech and Chong. Then, then you'll know what we're talking about. Wendy says a yeah, they also have butter coffee. I'm excited to try it out. So a lot of cool shops here. Katya says uh, Oregon is short for oregano. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Someone put a, a, a flower in the mouth of the Ocean God, Oceanus. And someone put googly eyes. Oh, look at that. <laughs> someone put googly eyes. In memory of the Cantrell Heron family. Doreen says, you better eat some seafood while you're here. You better. Doreen, I don't take to threats too kindly. 
But yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> I will be trying some uh, seafood. Stay tuned. And maybe here in Bainbridge. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll find some good seafood here. Have I had any seafood? I have not tried any seafood yet. I still have yet to try something. We're just wandering around, enjoying the sights. I will be going to Pegasus Coffee Shop, see how it is. That's the famous coffee shop here. Welcome to Bainbridge Island. I love it, beautiful. Mikoli says, get some cocktails and mussels. Eileen says that the family also had googly eyes. <laughs> Referring to the statue. Oh, cool scarves. 100% cotton. Oh, that's nice. Good price. $21. This is a good price for full cotton Turkish scarves here in America. Dia says, have you had great coffee yet? Yeah, I have, yeah. Uh, a Starbucks video will be released soon. I won't be able to do Starbucks original store live, at least inside, but I did record a video. Oh, look at this, Blackbird Bakery. Oh, pies.
Okay, so that was a long wait, but I think it'll be worth it. So let me find a good seat. I'll go down there. Okay, so that was fun. Uh, that that place is uh, packed with people, and uh, and it seems like it's very famous within here. And I'm getting a pie because I have to try the pie. So let's try it out. <laughs> hey, Lori, nice to see you here. Welcome to the live video. Eyeball says weather looks amazing. It really is. I'm about to get a Seattle tan. You know, I thought I thought I was gonna come out of Seattle pasty white, <laughs> like many of the grunge stars of the 1990s. But no, no. It seems like I'm gonna go back to New York, looking not like a grunge star, but looking like a reggaetonero, because I look like I just been to the tropical islands. I was hoping for pasty white. <laughs> and the kid was was staring. He was like, "Ooh, what's he doing?" <laughs> the dad had to uh, say, "Hey, no, no, he's filming me something." Uh, pie time, yes, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that! Look, a beautiful homemade blue barb pie. That's blueberry with rhubarb. Looks gorgeous. Looks stuffed with a lot of fresh berries. There's a, a good important. Um, lots of importance is placed on good quality ingredients here in the Pacific Northwest region, similar to New York City. So let's try it out. Nice, good American pie. I was about to go for the potato quiche, but found out it was just regular potato. I thought it was going to be sweet potato. So I decided to go for sweet instead. And they also had a hot pie, which I was very tempted to get. And they are rare, but I found one. But let's go for the good old nice blue, blue barb pie. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. That's so good. Uh, Veronique says, thank you for the Fleet Foxes recommendation. I listened to them and they're awesome. I'm glad you did. Oh. Oh, that's so good. So, the filling itself is very fresh. It's not too sugary. They put a little bit like acidic quality to it. So maybe some apple juice. They sweeten it somehow. Maybe a little bit of lemon zest. But so, mmm, so juicy, these blueberries. Very good blueberries that they put in here. Uh, the breading has more of that homemade, grandma-made taste to it. So it's not like a fancy, super gourmet pie crust. It has more of that homemade kind of casual uh, pie crust that you have at home. Uh, really, really good. Wow, that is a great pie. This is America, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. I'm in heaven. Wow, that is amazing. Mykonos is a terrific song, says Lester. Yes, Q Mykonos by Fleet Foxes. I gotta drink some water with this. Wendy says, ooh, Mr. Shop. This is Blackberry, Blackbird Bakery. Blackbird Bakery. Miss says, more water. Yeah, I have like three bottles of water in my bag. <laughs> A lot of water. 
So I highly recommend going in Blackbird Bakery. Really, really good. You should walk down by the boats while you're at Bainbridge. Ooh, let me know. Where can I see them? All right, let's try the breading on its own. Here it is. Mmm. Wow. Great crust. They made a huge crust. The rest of it is not so crusty. So in the middle is mostly just fruit. And then they made the actual crust like gigantic. Thomas says, do you miss your family and friends when you travel alone? It's always a good question, Thomas. Um, no, because I'm working. So generally I focus on the work. Um, Ariel, I will need to get my family here. Uh, take me here later in the month of my B-Day. <laughs> That's awesome, Lori. I would need some whipped cream with that. I'm not sure if they were offered whipped cream. They had cream cheese. Seattleites, for some reason, and nearby areas are obsessed with cream cheese. So stay tuned. You're going to see that cream cheese obsession soon uh, whenever we pass by a Seattle dog. Mm. Miss says, it looks like a muffin from this angle, yeah. But no, it's definitely a, a pie crust. AP says, do you want me to get one of the pie counter? They have the tar pie. AP, are you from Baybridge? <laughs> do let me know. Uh, no, no, I, I wouldn't need a full pie. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you so much for offering. And uh, George says you're rigging sunburn. Indeed I am. Indeed I am. We ain't a Seattle suntan. Mm. That's what America does right. America. It's a very div divisive country. There is uh, so much good, so much bad, all mixed together in this country. But one thing it does right is its pies, fruit pies specifically. While in the great UK there is amazing meat pies, they kind of suck with fruit pies. But here in America, we really thrive on the fruit pie. So that is as American as you can get. Mara says, how long you'll be in Seattle? You'll be seeing at least one full weekend of Seattle before I go to a different city. So next weekend will be the last Seattle weekend. So stay tuned. It's like uh, four plus three, seven more scheduled live days. AAP says, you're welcome. Whidbey Island is nice too. Oh, that's awesome, AAP. Oh, that was a filling pie. There's even ice creamery. Ooh, cool. Jennifer says, "Funny, it's, it's sunny in it's sunny in Seattle, but it's rainy in NYC. You know what they say? It's always sunny in Seattle." 
Oh wait, is that Philadelphia? <laughs> Inspire Life says, it looks like you're enjoying Seattle thus far. Yeah, I really am. I'm loving it. Of course, we're, in, we're not within the city. Uh, we're in the island across, but I'm really loving it. Yeah. So let's cross the street over here. Let's check out this bookstore. Ron asks, is there any uh, old, uh, older ladies with tiny dogs? No, not too much here, no. So you can tell that Seattle is the most, the second most expensive city, as far as I read in uh, many lists, uh, after San Francisco. And then New York, I think, should be number three uh, because the postcards were like $2 each. And those were like basic postcards. Um, but cool books right there. Cool thing is go to local, local bookstores and you'll find local guidebooks. Uh, so here they had uh, a few books on Bainbridge itself. So if you quickly want to, if you come here and want to quickly read up on the place you're at, go to the local bookstore. Okay, I had to mute for a little bit because someone was playing popular hip-hop music. So we've passed the cafe that was recommended by the gentleman at the museum, which is Hitchcock. It looks really good. That looks really good, actually. But let's continue walking around. Veronica says, yeah, in New York City, I see 10 for a dollar still. Yep, you can buy 10 postcards for a dollar in New York City. Uh, in Europe, it's like usually five for a dollar. Ooh, a church.
Let's check out by the boats. Marcy says it wasn't always an expensive city. It was because of uh, all the tech companies moving here. Microsoft, Amazon, and many others. Yeah, yeah, the tech scene. And you can tell in Seattle, one thing you can really notice is a lot of people are in tech. Technology companies, for short. And because all those workers are very high-paying, highly skilled workers, the prices have gone up. So they have been charging more in the cafes and for rent, uh, basically for everything. Jane says, beautiful church building. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be a church anymore. It appears to be some type of foundation called the Stevens House. Uh-oh. And right now we are in Bainbridge Island, which is uh, someone's waving hello. Maybe a viewer. Hey, how's it going? Uh, we are at Bainbridge Island right now. Lori says, you would have loved the Alien bookstore that was in Pioneer Square. It was one of the first victims of Amazon. Oh no, that sucks. Sally says, it's so expensive to buy a house in Seattle, you can't even touch it anymore. <laughs> That's funny. Let's check out the waterfront. Yes, in the wild. <laughs> The, the group of uh, girls said, is that an influencer? <laughs> Fiamma says, is this your first time in Seattle? It is my first time in Seattle, in the state of Washington, in the Pacific Northwest overall. Miss Lobb, what, is, there, is there a a prize for guessing correctly, Seattle. <laughs> the, the prize is the self-confidence and dignity that you now have because you are very good at geography. That is the prize, the prize of a lifetime. A lifetime of confidence with geography, trivia. Ooh, there's a little trails here. Not sure where this one is. Does the air smell differently here in Seattle? Says uh, in Northwest. Says Inks for our life. Mmm, smells like Teen Spirit. Ah, I love it. But in all seriousness, yeah, it does, it does smell different. It smells clean, more crisp. You get the overall smell. I'm smelling fish, so there must be some fish nearby. David says, are we there yet? We're, we're just strolling. I guess uh, we're going to the marina over here. We're seeing what, what's up in the marina. Ooh, waterfront trail, cool. Seems like a walkable place, says Rob. Yup, Seattle is, ooh, we found a coffee shop. This is why follow your gut instinct because who knows, you too might come across a beautiful coffee shop. Uh, 
uh, Miss says, or go to Starbucks. Starbucks, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's a very, very good company. Uh, well, of course, every company has, it's complicated with every company, but it's done a lot of good. And it is a good enough cup of coffee. But if you're in Seattle, yes, go to the first Starbucks, which I'll be posting a, a video of soon. And then soon I'll be walking around Pike Place and showing it to you from the outside. Stay tuned for that. Yes, go to the original Starbucks. It is a fun experience. But um, Seattle is such a great coffee city. And it seems like in the other surrounding areas that I think you're better off not going to Starbucks and going to the independent coffee stores. And there's a lot of independent coffee shops, even more than New York. Because New York, there's a few like gigantic brands uh, like La Cologne, Blue Bottle, Joe, 787 now, a few others. Uh, but here, there's a lot more independent coffee shops. So go have the independent coffee shops here in Seattle and the surrounding areas. So let's try Pegasus Coffee. This was recommended by a few urbanists and the guy at the museum. Thank you, guy at the museum. Cool place as well. All right, let's go inside. Hopefully there's no music. There is popular music. Ah, mute. Bear with me. Okay, here it is, the beautiful Americano. And we are in the backyard area. This is one of the main reasons why I love coffee so far in Seattle and the surrounding areas. Because if you saw the design, in New York City, many coffee shops tend to be just uh, minimalistic and don't have the comfiest seating um, the fact of having like couches and comfy seating kind of went out of style about 10 years ago 
mostly due to issues of people working too much on their laptops and unfortunately homeless. Um, but here in Seattle, it has retained that kind of 90s coffee shop aesthetic with the huge couches and comfy seating. And some of them are built in actual houses like these ones. Uh, so it's really, really cool. And I've already been to two other three coffee shops thus far uh, in Seattle proper and they all had couches. It's so awesome. I wish I could sit inside, they're playing some popular music. So we're gonna do it outside. Let's try this out. Ooh, a good Seattle coffee. Ooh, cool cup, they have their logo. Mmm. Ooh. That smells good. Oh yeah. Lydia, Lydia says, let me know if you need a ride to Edmonds. Oh, thank you so much, Lydia. I appreciate you reaching out to me. Do send, do send me a direct message. Uh, Famia says, do you get Americano? So if you don't know what Americano is, it's two shots of espresso with hot water. And espressos are very common here in Seattle, just like New York. Very common. Ooh. It's hot. They put boiling water in here, just like in New York City. Mm. David says uh, the reason also New York City doesn't have sofas in their coffee shops is because of um, because of bed bugs. Yeah, yeah, bed bugs. There's an epidemic in New York City. That's not the case in other cities. So yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, New York. Uh, can't no longer enjoy the luxury of having sofas. Sally says, my niece lives in Edmond. It's beautiful. You would love it, says Sally. Well, cool. It's very hot. I can't tell really the finer notes of it yet. So let's wait until it cools down and then we'll continue walking around on this live video. So feel free to ask me any questions as we let this cool down. If you want to see the ferry ride, you can watch the beginning of the video after this is done. Lori says, Edmonds is a great place to see as well. Ah, oh, this is good to hear. George says, Ar Ariel is having a Meg Ryan moment. Indeed. Expire Life says, sofa is so good. Oh yeah, it feels so good to sit in the sofa here in coffee shops. Makes me feel like the TV show Friends. I think they were finding them in movie houses too, says uh, David. Yeah, yep, yeah, in New York, yeah, bed bugs is an epidemic, but not, he not here in Seattle. I'm, I'm, I haven't come to other cities that have this, that issue. What is your favorite piece in the museum? Hey, <laughs> oh my God, we have the, the museum guy to the end. One of the two museum guys. <laughs> Calder, thank you so much for, I'm not sure if you were the one that recommended Pegasus. But thank you so much for recommending Pegasus. I can already tell it's a good coffee shop. So Calder says, what was your favorite piece in the museum? So I, I did a speed run through. <laughs> so I can't really pick one specific one, but there was this beautiful book in the book section that was in the closed off like uh, room uh, that was all in wood paneling. And this book that was in the corner had this beautiful rainbow color uh, with some type of writing on it. it. It took my breath away. So Calder is indeed the museum guy who recommended <laughs> Pegasus. So thank you so much, Calder. I appreciate you. Round of hearts for Calder and his colleague <laughs> for recommending this. Ooh, they're playing some good indie rock. Fiamia says, welcome to the fam. Yeah, Calder, you found this very quickly. Urbanist is, is a, a lot of other shows are called Urbanist. Ooh, we're surrounded by sparrows right here. Problem with cars and parking directly from a vehicle. I, 
I mean, spammers is a fact of life. Famia says, no bobs out here? No. In Seattle, there is. Uh, haven't seen, I've only seen sparrows here thus far. Haven't seen any other bird yet, but I do hear them. So Calder and any other locals, let me know what else is there to see in Bainbridge. We're very fast. Spot uh, at Hitchcock, uh, which I may feature. And uh, let me know what else is there to see while walking around here in Bainbridge. Well, you tried paying a visit to, to the Museum of Flight. I'm tempted, Lori. Yeah, do let me know. Is it uh, accessible via public transportation? Museum of Flight. I'm very tempted. There are bald eagles here. Veronica says, you need sunscreen. I, indeed I do, but I don't have any. <laughs> I'll survive. Terry says, I miss Seattle. Oh yeah, Terry, my dad lives near Pike's Market. Uh, was there when I visited my dad. He had cancer in 2006. Uh, my condolences, Terry. I'm glad you visited Seattle. I hope he enjoyed his time here. Calder says that he recommends Backstreet Beat is a tucked away record store and a bookstore. Ooh, cool, Calder. Thank you so much. Miss Lob says there's Seahawks here. <laughs> yes, there are. And Kimberly says, yes, it's accessible via the main line. Thank you so much. The main line on the bus system. Thank you. So the coffee, mm. it's very good. It's very good. It has almost that kind of classic American coffee taste to it. Okay. It's a, it strikes me as a darker roast. It is kind of like um, very full bodied coffee. Great. To me, and this is a compliment Pegasus, don't get offended. To me, it tastes like a nice, elevated office coffee. It has kind of that classic taste to it. Similar to the classic blends of Starbucks, like Pike Place. And this is what I noticed here in Seattle, is a lot of coffee is more veering towards kind of uh, the heartier flavors, the more full body flavors, the chocolatey notes, the nutty notes, than New York that tends to go very bright with their coffees. Fiamma says, I've been to Seattle three times. I love it there. My best friend lives here. Oh, so cool. Uh, Adam says, what do you think about visiting the Boeing building? But I might go to the Microsoft campus. I think that'll be more fun to walk around than Boeing. I'm not sure if there's that much to see in the Boeing campus. Also, I might show Amazon, so stay tuned. The Amazon headquarters. Not the actual Amazon rainforest. We're a bit far away. Uh, Gaga recommends uh, Top Pot Donuts. Why is it called Top Pot? <laughs> Galaga. Uh, when you're back in the city. Thank you so much. I'll check it out. Sally says there's nothing to see in the Microsoft campus. Really? Well, I heard that there's cool, at least there's a cool architecture with Amazon. And Janice, hello, nice to see you here in the live video. David says, all I know about Seattle is watching Frasier. <laughs> Touche, yeah, that's, that's basically all I knew about Seattle was Frasier, 10 Things I Hate About You, the movie, and um, and just knowing that Grey's Anatomy is based here. I didn't, never watched Grey's Anatomy, uh, but it's based here. That was the only things I really knew about Seattle and grunge. Not much more, but I'm glad to have come here thus far. Sub Pop uh, store down, downtown is fun. Sil, that's awesome. Oh, I'm glad that Sub Pop has their own store. Sub Pop is the record label that produced many of the records of the first grunge bands, including Nirvana, if I'm correct, also Soundgarden, and I think also um, Mudblood was the other one, I think it was called, and uh, many others. 
but then Sub Pop continue producing indie rock music and I used to write about indie rock back in the early 2010s and they produced Fleet Foxes I think they also produced uh, Passion Pit and a few other major indie rock bands and folk bands as well So Calder is saying that the Maple Bar, try it out. Ooh, check out where the scenes uh, they film Twin Twin Peaks. I think Twin Peaks was more in Oregon. Do let me know. But I think Twin Peaks actually takes place in Oregon. And Terry says my kids turned me into Pearl Jam. Yep, another classic of uh, that grunge scene. We check out the Museum of Pop Culture for Frank Gehry, maybe for super urbanists. So if you want to become a super urbanist, you'll see museums. I'll be featuring one to three museums for super urbanists. So stay tuned. Patreon.com slash urbanist. There you'll see museums. Maybe the Mopop will be featured. Veronica says, what's the time difference here? Yeah, it's about 3 p.m. right now. So I have a little bit left. Feel free to ask any last remaining questions or forever hold your peace. Paul says, interesting about why Top Pot is called Top Pot. <laughs> cool. I'll check it out. Interesting name for a donut shop. So Christine is saying that uh, Kurt Cobain is still alive. Uh, he, was, he was still alive. Okay. When you lived here. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't think Kurt on like Tupac or no, Biggie so Smalls or Elvis. Transfer, but it's Unfortunately, not. Kurt Cobain uh, oh, is right. very sad what happened to him. Oryx says, you're looking tan. Yeah, I'm getting that nice Seattle tan. Ron says, what do hyper-urbanists get? There's no hyper-urbanist bracket yet. Are you off a hotel or Airbnb? Stay tuned, Veronica. At the end of my stay, uh, this time around, yes, I'll be able to do a tour of my lodging. Stay tuned. Davis says, I used to watch Northern Exposure based on the... David, that's so cool. It's pretty popular at that time. Yeah, Northern Exposure was a famous show. It takes place in the Pacific Northwest, which is this region of the U.S. And also um, Twin Peaks was the other one. And there's a few other shows that are uh, that were filmed in this region. Oh, that's great. Kimberly says, Ten things I hate about you showed the troll under the bridge. They did indeed, yeah. Inspire Life says you should uh, they should be a quantum urbanists. Stay tuned, one day they'll be. Hmm, okay. I think Tom Robbins is from here and has said some uh, part of his books in Seattle. Really? Tom Robbins? I don't know too much about him, Miss Rob. Someone earlier mentioned that, yes, Seattle has a dark side to it as well in the surrounding region. It is the city with the most amount of serial killers. Not my favorite topic. Um, I won't be discussing that topic at all. <laughs> uh, I really don't like that topic, but yeah. That's the dark side of Seattle. And you should watch Anthony Bourdain's episode of Seattle for his sh last show uh, where he kept mentioning that topic to the random restaurateurs that he was interviewing. And it's funny, a lot of people were like, okay, <laughs> what can we talk about that? They, they were confused by him bringing it up a lot. Marcy says, Frasier was not filmed in Seattle. Yes, like the case with the lost sitcoms, uh, Frasier takes place in Seattle. They do the exterior shots in Seattle, but it was filmed. Uh, same case with a lot of other famous sitcoms from the 90s. Grey's Anatomy I, I probably is also filmed in sets and probably is not filmed here in Seattle. Do let me know. Might be filmed in Vancouver. Sally Jordan, no. I, you know, she was 
And Lori says, Ariel, I checked the Google and buses run from downtown to the museum. Cool. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Lori, for checking it out. I used to watch a lot of crime documentaries as uh, Jane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're a true crime fanatic, Seattle might have something, a lot of interest for you. I met President yeah. Bill Clinton, says Christine, here in downtown Seattle when he was campaigning. Oh, very cool. Did, the other one. Did he give you that powerful eye contact that he does? He's very good at just looking you directly in the soul. <laughs> Let me know. Robert says even Seifel was filmed in L.A. Yep, and that takes place in New York City. Friends as well was filmed in L.A. Calder says, Laura Palmer's body in the show Twin Peaks washed up on the river uh, across the water on the northwest side of Bainbridge. <laughs> Thank you so much, Calder. Calder coming in with the fun facts about Bainbridge. Twin Peaks has uh, shots here or very nearby. Veronica says, did you tan any? I'm, I'm about to come out of this trip looking very tan. Christine says he was indeed very charming. Yeah, I can imagine. Perhaps there's a lab with. I don't know if there's a Seattle streamer. Do let me know. I don't think there's that many Seattle vloggers. There's uh, Monica Church and Shelby Church, which I'm not sure if they're based in Seattle still. I think Monica Church is, which has like 3 million, 2 million subscribers. Um, I think that's the only major vlogger in Seattle. There might be a few others, but there's not that many. Susie says, are you more open to American cities? I'm not sure how much American cities are going to live up to Seattle in terms of the ease of walkability and public transportation. It makes me curious uh, now to see the other cities that does have public transportation, like Miami, Portland, uh, L.A. I'm curious how it is now with a little bit more public transportation. Terry says, I both, uh, both, both met uh, Carter and Clinton. Oh, so cool. Thank you so much, Calder, for tuning in. Calder, the museum guy, tunes in. Thank you so much. We're going to continue walking around soon. Everyone, round of hearts for Calder and his colleague at the museum for being so kind to let us view the museum. Mm, all right, last sip. Wow, and now I'm feeling like I can climb Mount Rainier because of all the coffee I just consumed. Now I have all the energy to go 14,000 feet to the snowy mountains. Let me know, you wanna see a live video? A three day live video, all live, climbing 14,000 feet on top of a volcano, an active volcano. Hmm. That was a great coffee, Pegasus. Well, that would get ratings, yeah, it would. That was an excellent coffee shop. Oh, thank you again, everyone who recommended it. Ver Veronique says, if it's possible, yes, please. I would like to see you climb Mount Rainier. <laughs> uh, I'm joking because Mount Rainier is actually one of the harder summits, uh, one of the harder mountains to summit. Uh, it requires very experienced climbers and even experienced mountain climbers with 
decades of experience have gone missing and have died. Flowing Happy with a $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Flowing Happy. Sponsored along with Lori and a few other people. Sponsored the coffee break. Highly recommend Pegasus, great coffee. And Blackbird Bakery. Now the marina. And hopefully we can see a Sasquatch. Where's Bigfoot at? Do let me know. I'm trying to find Bigfoot, uh, local Seattle lights, and PNWers. Let me know. Where are you at? Where's the Bigfoot? David says, I live vicariously through the TV show Rock the Park. Let them climb mountains. <laughs> That's cool. So the ferry there in the distance. Robert says, I doubt Bigfoot does much yachting. Yeah, I don't think he's much of a yachting fan. Maybe I should go somewhere else. George, please be nice to the other fellow viewers. The weather in New York is today rainier than Seattle, says David. Oh, yeah. I brought the sunshine with me. So sorry, New York. I took it with me, stole the sunshine. And brought over here to Seattle. Waterfront Trail. It has to be updated. It's uh, saying New York time and weather. Wow, that guy's wearing a weighted vest to run. It's hardcore. Lynn's so, so beautiful and peaceful. Oh, yes. This is a cool little walkway. Who wants to take a swim in the Bainbridge water? Hey, Rhonda, nice to see you here. Maybe you'll see some otters. I would love to see Benedict Cumberbatch. I mean, some otters here in Bainbridge or Seattle. Let me know, where can I see some otters? I gotta find otters, I gotta find Bigfoot, I gotta see an orca, and I gotta see a bald eagle. And I gotta see a, a, a seahawk fan in the wild. So let me know, where can I find those things? Adam says, just put one finger in the water. <laughs> yeah, the water's pretty still. I would not swim in that. But I do hear a waterfall. They piped up the water stream. Watch your head. You got to watch out. Sometimes being 5'2". Uh, MC says rain, wind. Or not in luck. Shine and weather all throughout. Of course, that's, that's what's
Okay, for some reason there was a dog wearing a visor staring directly at me. I have no idea why. Luckily it was tied up. <laughs> don't trust a dog with a visor, ladies and gentlemen. You don't know what he's up to. Dogs with visors, don't trust them. They're up to no good. These streets seem wide. That's why I noticed in Seattle, you know, Seattle's very walkable, but they also do cater to the car, so they do both. Similar to like a city like Washington, DC. So yeah, there, there's uh, very wide streets. It's very easy to drive many parts here. Sil says, bald eagles are everywhere along the coast. Just look in the trees every now and then and you might just see one. Ooh, cool. Okay. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Tulips on the corner of the road. Yeah, there's a tulip field, tulip fields here in Washington state. All right, so we got gone back to Pegasus, and let's go back to the main square. <laughs> Marcy says, if you look up at the trees and see something that looks like a white basketball, it's probably an eagle. Really? Oh, that's so cool. Do you track your mileage or footsteps, says Gaga? No, I don't. Never, never track them. I used to track it early in urbanist days and we'll walk between four to 10 miles a day. Lori says, yes, the tulip fields are up north. Oh, thank you so much, Laura, for letting us know. Yeah. Yeah, drink some more water. Bear with me. Hey, John, nice to see you here. Welcome. John, I'm doing well. How's everyone doing, John? Let me know. 
How are you doing? Ah. Maybe you're thirsty due to a lower humidity than New York. That might be the case, yeah. A mixture of maybe the, the actual uh, environment, maybe diet. I've been having a lot of coffee too. But yeah. Do you finish your rainwater? Yeah, this is my third water bottle now in my bag. Miss Lob. Nice are uh, area, yes. Ron says, do you miss the fake monks <laughs> in uh, Times Square? No, no, not missing Times Square at the moment. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying visiting the small towns. So stay tuned this weekend. We'll be showing you more Seattle. There's going to be more life. Uh, we're today at Bainbridge. We're seizing the sunny day to see a little bit of the outskirts of Seattle. But stay tuned for more city stuff uh, tomorrow through Sunday. You'll be seeing more of the city. Beautiful architecture, really, here. I'm, I'm impressed by the architecture I've seen thus far in Seattle and now in Bainbridge. Lynn says, sounds good. Can't wait to explore with you. Yeah, Lynn. Jason says, I agree with the architecture. Yeah, they do interesting things with apartment buildings. And this is a great example right here. Sorry, I'm a bit winded. Um, too much coffee. So at the bottom level, it's mixed use. At the bottom level, we have a business. We have a coffee shop. There's an office and a medical office down there. And then you have... A variety of different apartments and they seem like they're in different styles and that's really cool this is the perfect apartment building in my opinion and if it were like two or three stories more this is what we need more in new york city Ron says, such a romantic place. Oh, I'm glad you think so, yeah. There's a nice romance to this place. Beautiful. I think we have reached the end of the town at this point. Yep. Pretty much reached the end of the walkable town. Jason says, are you finding the locals pleasant? I am, yeah. People here in the PNW are very nice. Similar to New York where it's straight. As I mentioned, different from kind of the polite vibe of the UK. So if you're f familiar with New York culture, I find it pretty much similar. Okay, everyone. I think uh, we visited most of Bainbridge. Uh, now there's a very famous food place over here. Let me know if you want to stop by for some food. I, I hope they're still open at this point. Uh, I'm not sure if they close for midday, but let me know if you want to see a food break. Miss Miss says there's an eerie creepiness around. I don't think so. I, I, I'm curious as to why you feel that. Maybe because it is quiet. Yes. All right. Let me know if you want a food break to end this live video.
Okay, everyone, there's, there's popular music playing here. So portion, but when there's music, that means I... So that means I no longer can make money off my own video. Company takes all the money. Live video. Susie says, glad, glad you moved that hot. So, if you know where I am, keep doing video. Uh, Okay, I turned on correctly. Hopefully it's a little bit better now. Ooh. Hey, I'll have the blackened rock fit. And, uh, does that come with the side or? Perfect, okay. Yeah. We'll just have that, yeah. Perfect, that's good. And, um, yeah, that's it. Perfect. So it's all lowercase, all one word, coffee first. Coffee first, all right. Got perfect. it.